Peace, power, and prosperity, family. This is Amir, the Chicago crypto hustler, Bitcoin block bully, coming to you once again with a late night show with Tech Money Tuesdays. What's going on, family? How we doing out there? Of course, you already know we're coming in talking about cryptocurrency, how it correlates with the financial markets, how it is tokenized in the future as we know it. Brother D. Duncan, how we doing out there? Um, it's a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about. Uh, I do see that Pundi X is up and rising right now, up uh, maybe 22%. Uh, last time I checked, 20, no, nah, I think it was up 27% last time I checked within the last 24-hour period. So that's definitely a positive thing. Um, you know, we're going to go through it. Check out the top 10. No, excuse me. Check out the top 20. Scroll through, see who the top runners are in the market. We may do a little bit of charting. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely got to get ahead of this. Uh, board is starting to take off right now. I don't know if a lot of people have been paying attention to the market lately, but we've been having sporadic jumps. And, you know, as people have been saying, as I've been saying, I mean, I even say, as I have, a lot of people were saying recently that they were waiting for this bull run to come. And I was seeing the bull come in the form of alt altcoins, ulterior of currency. And I've been making, you know, many of those calls over the last couple of weeks, months. Even through this last year, through the whole bull run, anyone that's following me can tell that I've been making a hell of a call through the whole bull run. They never stopped. Now, once we hit bottom and I started seeing that turnaround coming from those altcoins, I was telling people like, man, y'all sitting there looking at Bitcoin, waiting for Bitcoin to take off. And all the time, the bull run is here. It's starting. Let me not call it a bull run. The correction was coming into play at the time where people were looking for Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and all that to take off. A number of these altcoins were jumping, doing 50, 100, 200% within a matter of days, weeks. You know what I mean? Worried about Pundi X being a pump and dump. Do not uh, invest in it then. Do not, anything you worried about being a pump and dump, I advise do not invest in it. Only spend your money where you are, you know, 70 that, you know, 60 to 70% sure that it is secure. You know what I mean? So. Anything you got any type of doubts like that in, I, 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 I advise not even even touching, just to be honest with you. Peace, Brother Kennedy. Uh, Tristan, how we doing out there, family? How we doing? As we can see, it's an all-green market tonight. Bitcoin coming in up 1.7%, $4,074. Ethereum at $154. We got Ripple coming in at $37. Uh, Litecoin at $40.29, respectively, across the board. Now, Litecoin was one such coin that I gave a shout out and a call to maybe i believe it was trading maybe around 22 maybe 24 dollars i believe when i first uh in fact i think it was before christmas i believe i in fact it was i believe litecoin was trading uh i believe litecoin was trading at about um what 20 22 23 dollars before christmas and I say, you know, what's wrong with grabbing twenty dollars worth of Litecoin and putting it in a stocking gift in the form of a, a paper wallet for your children? And uh, you know, with that, from there, it's just been it, it, it's been a constant uh, growth. After that, uh, does it have a utility? Um, it's actually used to pay out um, as a reward program for those that utilize the system. Um, we've we, we've done a number of, of huge bills, brother Duncan. Um, who is a, I call him the ambassador in the U.S. for Pundi X, but um, he is more well in depth to answer any and all pertinent questions that you may have about the Pundi X token, as well as the POS system as it correlates. With the token. I don't know if the brother is still relevant right now, but we can take a look at everything um, in due time. Let me see. Peace, 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 brother Sanders. How we doing? How we doing? How we doing? Um. Now, getting right along, let's see. I believe the first thing we're going to take a look at maybe is the top 20 coins. And what you're looking at right now is the growth in each one across the board as it relates to a day chart. Meaning I'm using day candlesticks, 24-hour candlesticks. We can see Tron right now has made full circle. In fact, it has exceeded. It has exceeded the previous high. You can see, let's see. Open this up a tad bit. So yeah, we broke we broke that high. What are we hitting right now? 
Okay, so we can see. Hold on, I'm going to show y'all something. Slide this down here. Where do we meet? Top at about right there. And we're currently being stopped out right there. Now, a nice amount of support. What we're looking at right now is uh, I just jumped straight to Tron. And I'm looking at it versus USD, though, when I need to be looking at it versus BTC, but all is well. Let's see. Mm, like him better. And that was a double tweeze of bottom. Let's see. I don't see any more confirmations with it though. And that amount of support there. So if we go ahead and shrink this down, slide this over, pull this up. Like so, swing low to swing high. We can see our 50% retracement coming in. We can see our 38. Normal levels of retracement between 38 and 61. So, if we used to see any type of sharp, sharp, sharp pullback, you will be looking at an entry uh, around this area. In between this area right here, any type of major pullback. Now, if we're talking short term, let's see. What are we looking at then? Then you're looking at a pullback anywhere around between this area. And that's just your normal level of retracement, 38.61. So you got 38.50, 61. But we're going to take a look at coin market cap, see exactly where everything is. I also want to uh, take a look at CNBC. When you see stuff like this on mainstream, under the cryptocurrency section of something that everyone sees, it is, it's, it's about time that we uh, started paying attention. Um, in fact, I'm going to get into the story before I even move into, got to get back over here. Because right now while I'm reading, uh, I cannot see y'all comments. So let me get. Let me get Facebook pulled up on the phone real quick. If y'all can't share this out too, please share this out. That way anybody else can get this information. As we're sharing it live and anyone may be able to answer or ask any questions that they may have that I'll be able to answer. So let me go ahead and get over here to the live feed. Give me one second, fam. Let me get my uh, phone pulled up. All right, here we go. So. Apple and Tesla shares on the blockchain could be the next big thing in crypto. Security tokens or digital versions of financial securities like stocks and bonds are becoming a new buzzword in crypto. Analysts and executives in the industry see security tokens as a development that could reinvigorate the cryptocurrency space. A key difference setting security tokens apart from other cryptocurrencies is that they are asset backed and fall within regulatory parameters, expert, experts say. And from what I hear, you'll be able to trade 24 hours with these uh, tokenized assets, um, unlike the stock market, which closes. So that's another big um, plus. So uh, the story goes on to say, cryptocurrencies had a wild 2018, tumbling well below some of the record highs seen toward the end of 2017. Bitcoin, once worth almost $20,000, plunged last year, closing out 2018 at a price below $4,000, which is around the time people really started paying so, um, you know, somewhat more attention to it versus when it was a thousand, two thousand dollars when I first started trading in it, um, which is uh, an excellent buy in opportunity. I mean, I don't see what people are tripping in. I mean, I've seen a, a, a huge amount of people run and try to grab this thing at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 thousand dollars, eager to buy in on something that's high priced as that. And it drops down to 10,000, 6,000, 7,000. 5000 4000 $3,100, and then people are looking at it like it's like it's poison, and it's like, what? Like, so you'll buy it when it's $18,000, which you won't buy when it's $3,500? Like, I don't get it. Well, um, it goes on to say other major virtual currencies, including XRP and Ether, 
also fell steeply. Analysts and executives in the industry are increasingly increasingly pointing to a fairly new development that could reinvigorate the space, putting securities like stocks and bonds on the blockchain. So-called security tokens are becoming a new buzzword in crypto. The term is part of a phenomenon in the industry known as tokenization, turning real world real world assets into digital tokens. Now I'm gonna stop right here because I want to um sort of put some emphasis on tokenization and let you all know that. What you're seeing go on right now is not only um, doable by financial institutions or entities of the such, you as a corporate entity are also able to tokenize whatever assets you may want to tokenize and thus place on the blockchain in order for distribution or trading or um, sharing. You understand what I mean? Any and everything that you're seeing these big companies do right now in cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency itself has given us the power to now. That's what I'm trying to get a lot of people to realize that it is taking the power out of the hands. Now, let me with, with, with this, it's taking the power out of the hands of some of the most wealthiest and put it in the hands of any and everybody. Because never in a day has you have you been on the same playing field with somebody that has over a billion dollars in capital, over a million dollars in capital, let alone. You've never been able to go up and play the same game with these people as you're able to take $10, $20, jump on the biggest exchange market in the world, being the Binance exchange market, and trade against some of the biggest players in the world. It's never, it, you've never been given the chance like that. You understand what I mean? Um, just a simple fact that there was as many ICOs as I've seen come to birth in 2018 through 2017. You know what I mean? And the amount of pump and dumps, I mean, just. Man, any and everybody was making tokens back then. It was so easy. Like, it was crazy. So just me seeing that let me know that it's a, a brand new paradigm coming into the world of finance. Um, it's into our world, period. I mean, if we look at Illinois, period. Or exactly, real estate, art. Glad you laughed. Perfect timing. And I got to come on for the 9 o'clock news, right? 9 o'clock crypto news, uh, Brother Biggin. But um, back to what I'm saying, though. Right now, what we're seeing is a chance for any and everybody to get in and put their stake in the ground and really, really make a difference and build a foundation on this new thing called cryptocurrency and blockchain. And if you miss this boat, man, I'm going to tell you like this. You are doing, let me not say that. Um, in general, I'll say that many people are doing a disservice to their family tree and not getting into cryptocurrency and blockchain right now in 2018, 2019, 2000. Because by the time this thing hits the fan, it's going to be like everything. Oh, it's too late. People, you buying Amazon at $2,000, $1,500 when you could have got Amazon at a buck, $2, $8, whatever the case. That's all I'm trying to say. All you have to do is educate yourself. Facts. Those are the facts. Due diligence is needed within this space. That's the, main, that's, that, that's the most thing that I push. It ain't even about the, the profit on my page, on my channel, on none of that. It's all about full comprehension of what you're doing and what you're utilizing and, and the different ways that it can be utilized. Now, not just cryptocurrency knowledge in general. I expect you to uh, learn if you're going to be doing these type of digital transactions. Also, find out what commercial transactions are. Find out what the unif unified commercial code is. I suggest you study contract law, business law, trust law, legalese. When I read through a lot of these papers, in fact, one such paper I'm going to bring up right now, um, just momentarily, is on the Stellar Network. Let's see. Uh, digital assets. Here it is. When I read this paperwork, a lot of this sounds like trust documents. To me. I'm going to read through this, and you can tell me how this, this, if this sounds like a debtor and creditor type of relationship. When you hold assets in Stellar, you're actually holding credit from a particular issue. The issuer has agreed that it will trade you its credit on the Stellar Network for a corresponding asset, e.g. fiat currency, precious metal, outside of Stellar. Let's say Scott issues oranges as credit on the network. If you hold orange credits, you and Scott have an agreement based on trust or a trust line. But, man, I'm telling you, man, study trust law. Um, you both agree that when you give Scott an orange credit, he gives you an orange, right? That's the credit and debt, right? I give you, you discharge, you pay me. When you hold an asset, you must trust the issuer to properly redeem its credit. Since issuers of, of Stellar will not want to trust just any issuer, accounts must explicitly trust an issuing account before they're able to hold the issuer's credit. In the example above, you must explicitly trust Scott before you can hold orange credit. 
In trust and issuing account, you create a trust line. Trust lines are entities, and I expect y'all to go get a Black Laws or a Bouvier's Dictionary and start understanding what some of these words are that we're using. That's not entities, that's entries, but it, the way I've been reading so uh, lately, it, it looked like entities. But you should definitely figure out what entities are. Um, trust lines are entries that persist in the stellar ledger. They track the limit of which your account trusts the issuing account and the amount of credit from the issuing account that your credit account currently holds. Like, it's that one, that one line right there. They, the trust line tracks the limit for which your account trusts the issuing account and the amount of credit from the issuing account that your account currently holds. It sounds tricky, but I'm telling y'all, this ain't nothing but contract law. That's all it is. Put in a digital format. Like, whoever really came up with this whole idea of cryptocurrency, and, um, and excuse my voice, family, if it can't sound kind of hoarse, tight, you know, moving a lot for the last couple of days, pretty much on my own. So I'm a little tired and beat down, but I definitely had to come live and bring y'all some of the information. But just as I read through a lot of this, it just reminds me of um, that which I'm studying is, which is you know, law, legalese, whatnot. But uh, just that definitely interesting stuff. <clears throat> I need to go make me some tea. Getting on with the story, it goes on to say, in the case of security tokens, tradable assets like equity and fixed income are transformed. Um, digital fixed income are transformed into digital assets that use blockchain technology. The virtual level of activity underpins cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Security tokens have been talked about for some time. Hey, close that door for me, Maji. But now one firm is looking to put them to test. On Monday, VX Exchange, an Estonian-based crypto firm, launched a trading platform that lets investors buy shares of popular NASDAQ-listed companies, including Apple, Tesla, Facebook, and Netflix, indirectly through security tokens. Each token is backed by one share of the company traders want to invest in and entitles them to the same cash dividend. The crypto community, man, family, don't be blind to what the hell is going on. First, the futures contract from the NYSE says they're going to pay you out in cryptocurrency versus fiat dollars. Now we're saying that you can tokenize in the form of a cryptocurrency. Y'all seeing the transition in front of y'all face, and some of y'all not even getting a hold of it. Some of y'all still want to cash out the Federal Reserve note. When they're showing you right now that the cryptocurrency is just as valuable if not more so valuable than the federal reserve note itself if i can get paid in the end nothing but bitcoin i would take it if i could use nothing but bitcoin i would use it i care not so much as many others for the federal reserve note and that's just me but uh going right along with the story the crypto community has been talking about security tokens for well over a year now without much progress so we think the impact will be huge um Amadeo Moscato DX, chief operating officer, told CNBC by email over the weekend. By tokenizing stocks of some of the biggest publicly traded companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and more, we are opening an untapped market of millions of old and new traders around the globe cutting out the middleman. I hear that. Say that again. By tokenizing stocks, some of the biggest publicly traded companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and more. We are opening an untapped market of millions of old and new traders around the globe cutting out the middleman. That's what all this is about, getting that middleman out. I've been saying this for almost two years now. That they cutting that 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 middleman? No. Peer to peer, me to you. It is it's a new day and age to how things is gonna be ran, family. And I I say that it is pertinent for it is of high regard and importance that we get on top of this transition that's going on right now. To understand cryptocurrency and the blockchain is to understand the matrix as we know it in the financial sector. And that's where it, it, it really, I'm, I'm going to break this down for y'all real quick. And this might be going too deep. I'm going to break it down what I see. Um, when I look at money, right, I've, I've been taught and I've been privileged enough to understand and comprehend fiat currency for simply what it is, a physical representation of the actual digit that is money. Money is not cash. Now, legally speaking, even if you wanna talk about constitutional money, which is silver and gold, that in and of itself is not truly correct either because it's just a number game, a numbers game. You have to tie it to something. And that is the digital ledger that we have now on the blockchain, but that's the bookkeeping that people have been doing for hundreds of thousands of years, especially when you play with fiat dollars. If you, anyone grabbed a copy of my book, The uh, Puzzle, I don't know if y'all remember, but I talked about the continental 
dollar in there. And that was the first fiat currency made it within the United States. That's when it was the continental United States, not the United States corporation as it is now, your research. So when we look at the fiat back then, it was just a number. Even though you was able to redeem it for silver and or gold, you know what I mean? And that was with the gold and silver. But um, when you look at money, think of it like this. Perfect example. Many of y'all have bank accounts. I do not. Many of y'all have bank accounts, correct? When you go and get your bank statement from the bank and you want to know how much, or you get a balance from the ATM, or whatever the case may be, it's actually not showing y'all no type of Polaroid um, picture of your money sitting anywhere. I'm going to be honest with you. You don't know where your hell your money is. Also, if you grab my book, you see how the banks play with 90% of the money and only legally have to keep 10% of the money in the bank. So what I mean to say is, when you get a bank statement, they're giving you a bunch of numbers on a piece of paper and telling you this is how many funds you have available when all the time. It's just a binary code. It's just numbers, zeros and ones. And they represent an amount of Federal Reserve notes tied to it that you will be able to withdraw. Now, here's the whole thing. You put your money into the bank, right? As soon as you give your money over to the bank, that's just theirs. Because let me tell you what they do. They turn around and guess what? You want to take this out? We're going to charge you. Want to do a transaction? We're going to charge you. You know what I mean? You want to transfer it from your savings to the checking, depending on where you're banking at, we're going to charge you. You understand what I mean? And then even though we know this is your money and I'm a blank teller and I may have seen you 365 days out of the year, if you come in here without that little piece of plastic with your name or your, your corporate name and your uh, face on it, I'm not going to give you this money. Even though you say that it's yours, without that piece of plastic, I'm sorry, Mr. So-and-so, but I can't give you this because you know what? When you sign that paper, you really sign your rights over, your fiduciary rights over to us. We are not a trustees over this. You know what I mean? So I just suggest uh, studying law and studying, understand what's going on with the uh, money system. I was getting kind of off track. Let me get back to it. It goes on to say uh, investors will be able to trade digital stocks around the clock. I told y'all. Even at the market's close. Look, they want all the money, man. And they want all the money and they just found the back door. Look, it's almost like the movie The Big Short, right? When dude wanted to go short the housing market, there was not an instrument available in order to allow him to do that. What did he do? He created a brand new instrument within the banking industry all on his own, man. Y'all don't understand how crucial this shit is. You really get to study it. Cryptocurrency just did the same thing. They just opened up the door in a whole new paradigm, which wasn't once what you could not have done in a regulated world, you can now do within this cyber world. Money and everything is going digital. I remember working for ADT in 2000, and that'd be my son was born in 06, 07. That'd be like 2008. And at the time, we were transitioning the systems over from analog and digital. And at the time, I didn't know really what the hell I was doing. But now in 2018, almost 10 years later, I sort of, I, not even sort of, I fully comprehend what was going on. The whole world was transitioning at that time. And that was the beginning. Or really, it was kind of late. So we're usually Johnny come late, you know what I mean? Um, but definitely everything is going digital right now. So I suggest um, we all tune in and get an understanding of where this is going. I look at dudes that, that, that flaunt fiat like you're living in the Stone Age. And I'm going to be honest with you, if you don't know what to do with that money, you're useless. You know what I mean? Uh, the ability, uh, no, I read that, blah, 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 blah. Um, but Donnie questioned whether DX's exchange was sound on a regulatory front. We're unsure and even skeptical of DX exchange's model because we don't think it's acceptable to list tokenized asset shares of a company without shareholder consent. He said. However, now that's key. Listen to that. Hold on. Let me go back over that. It said they're listing tokenized shares of a company without the shareholders. Okay, everything is law. They, they found a loophole, almost like they did in the Constitution in Article 1, Section 8, um, which allowed them to turn all this into a corporate. But, uh, however, we do think that the model can meet regulatory standards if executed properly. They're not saying that it's within ex uh, regulatory standards right now. Hmm. Interesting. DX stressed that its digital stocks are classified as derivatives with the underlying asset being equity of 10 NASDAQ listed firms, and that its platform is regulated under the European Union Mafia, excuse me, no, MIFID II directive. Uh, the M2, a set of reforms to European investment services regulation aims to protect investors and increase transparency and confidence 
in the industry post crisis. Post crisis, family, you got to start reading these things. It's just going through words when you see certain stuff. Back up, reread the, the sentence, see how it was used, see what they're implying. They're tokenizing a lot of things right now, right? They're starting to pay out out of the United States with Bitcoin versus the Federal Reserve note being the US dollar or the US dollar being the Federal Reserve note, however you want to say it. Um, when they talk about a crisis, when we talk about a recession, I uh, released a story not too long ago where a cashless store, they said a cashless store was being biased against the poor. Now I'm gonna ask you this, if this is a cashless store, meaning that you are not allowed to use fiat notes, bank notes, Federal Reserve notes, cash, you know, the narrows, money, dead presidents, 10s, 20s, 50s, and 100s in this store, and you're only able to do digital transactions, I'm assuming, who are they calling the poor, right? Who are they calling poor? Those that only have a simple understanding of how to pass this dollar off and get things with it. I'm telling you, dollars were made for essentially the poor system. Let me say that. And I want to say it in a broad sense, but it was used as a means of transact transacting for the poor because they didn't have the means of um, bartering off property or own, because they, they never, they didn't own anything. So we got to give them something to use. You know what I mean? Um, when you don't own property or any assets, all you have to do is then you become a consumer of those assets that we offer and the property that we hold. Do you understand what I mean? Um, let me get back on the track though. Cypress licensed firm MPS Marketplace Securities is holding the stocks in a segregated account. DX built the platform on top of NASDAQ's merchant engine technology, which is used across more than 70 international markets. Experts are pointing to the model as one that could provide a solid form of reinvestment for trade versus cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin which have proven at times to be highly volatile, as well as a new potential source of fundraising for startups and large firms alike. FDO, these are the security tokens. Tell y'all, hey, I mean, I thought I, brought the, I, I thought I brought this along with the understanding of what smart lands was and what we were supposed to be looking for, you know what I mean? No need for banks in the future, your cell phone. Exactly, facts, facts. This is turning everybody into their own bank. But I'm gonna tell you something. You were always looked as a private banker. Why? Because you were doing transactions with banker notes. Remember, ignorance to the law is not an excuse. Just because you didn't know that that $20 bill is a banker note, that's not our problem or their problem. You understand what I mean? That's up to you. It's, I mean, it's not like it's hidden. It says right on the, it, it says, I mean, I wish I had some fiat on it. Um, when you look at it, like Brother Duncan said earlier, it says that it's a note. It says it's used to pay all debts, public and private. I believe it may say within the United States. I may not. But it does say this is used to pay all debts. Debts, debts, debts. So a debt is what? So when you go and give that Federal Reserve note off of a TV, right, how are you paying a debt? If, you're, if, you're, if you are getting a TV from, we'll say, Walmart or Best Buy, how are you discharging? Or how are you paying a debt by getting that TV? Because it was prepaid. Everything within the United States is prepaid. Right? Um, it goes on to say, where did I leave off at? Um, where did I leave off at? Uh, I'm sorry, I'll keep getting sidetracked, family. Um, new security tokens can be issued and sold to investors. Similar to how new digital tokens are sold through a crowdfunding method known as the initial coin offering or ICO. This is what's known as the security token offering or STO. ICOs, STOs, IPOs. Look, I'm just going to start making up O's. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about right now. What type of offering? Bitcoin, Black Bully Offering. BBO. No, Black Bully Offering. Hmm. BBO. Hmm. I mean, they're making shit up, right? Who's to say you can't make the same thing up? Remember, go watch Big Do. Go watch the uh, Big Short again. Or whatever it's called. The biggest short? No, I think it's the big short. Go watch it. See what Buddy did, man. There was no such thing as short in the housing market before Buddy did. He made it up, man. And it's all through his comprehension of law and how to find loopholes and create that which was once not there. Look what he did. He marginalized off it. I'm talking about billions. Um, ICOs were a source of much controversy in the crypto space in both 2017 and 2018, like I just told y'all. With China and South Korea banning the practice in the U.S. securities and uh, the SEC raping 
rapping, raping, rapping, rapping a number of ventures and founders over raping a number of ventures and founders over alleged legal activities. One supposed cryptocurrency startup called Giza made off with more than two million through a fake ICO scam. The investigation last, investigation last year showed. Dubious is the murky world of ICOs is the funding method at one point eclipsed early stage vendor capital funding. ICO projects raked in almost 6.6 .6 billion in 2017 and 21 billion in 2018, according to data project by ICO listing site coin schedule. The difference with SDOs, experts say, is that security tokens are asset backed and fall within regulatory perimeters. Security tokens use blockchain to allow for efficient transactions like cryptocurrency, but are different in all other ways, securities, Donnie said. They emphasize regulatory compliance, automated regulatory reporting, and represent share interest in value producing assets. This ultimately provides stable value versus the volatility of crypto. Um, hold on, give me one second, family. I did forget to share this out on uh, IG. Give me one second, let me share this out on IG so I continue on. Peace, great rising. I mean, ah, oh, man, not great rising. Great evening, good evening, uh, Ms. Glenn. Uh, Brother Jason, Brother Winston, how we doing out there, family? Peace, power, and prosperity. How we doing out there? It's nine. I swear to God, every time I look at my four, my phone, it's a 44 number. It's 944 right now. So I'm picking my phone up and share this off over the IG real quick. Hopefully I can catch the whole uh hopefully I can catch the whole lick um in the mix. 944 within the live feed so I can share the whole thing with people to see. Let me see. Yep, let's get it. Okay. Let me catch that 44. Got him. All right, so now let's go over here. Let me share this real quick. Please excuse me, family. Please excuse me. Just let me share this to IG real quick so I can let the uh, Instagram family know that I am live streaming right now via Facebook and not Facebook. I mean, uh, not YouTube, because I did say that I may uh, ha have went and did a YouTube. Uh, so let me go ahead and post this real quick. Hey, there we go. Um, live right now. Tune in, family. If y'all can't, please share this out. Also, if y'all can't, please share this out. I'll please advise you to share this out. Oh, I would ask you, uh, rather. Um, live right now for Tech Money Tuesday. So, just as a, as a show of hands, a thumbs up. Who out there right now is invested in cryptocurrency? Has been, um, Who's investing in cryptocurrencies first and foremost? Not you know one of the other trading or hodling or investing, but just who is who has some who has some stake in the game right now? That's watching right now. Who got some skin in the game? Let me know who got some skin in the game out there. Let me know who's actually avidly out there doing something. Um, the uh, Facebook. Uh. There we go. Got that shit off. All right. Uh, brother uh, Ravel, what's going on, Brother Robinson? Um, it goes on to say they emphasize regulatory compliance, automated regulatory reporting, and re represent share interest in value producing assets. This ultimately provides stable value versus the volatility of crypto. So they want you to trade crypto without it being crypto. California site Indiegogo delved into the world of STOs last year, hosting a platform to let investors indirectly own shares of a luxury ski resort by buying security tokens. That token sale brought in one eighteen million for the venture. Security tokens or STOs have been declared compared to stable coins, uh, cryptocurrencies pegged one one to the government backed currencies to avoid the volatility. Typically, man, I, I mean, I just had a. I'm talking about a download out this word. I don't even know it just came to me when I was reading that last uh, statement, that last paragraph. I'm gonna read that again and see if y'all catch it. Crowdfunding site Indiegogo delved into the world of STOs last year, hosting a platform to let investors indirectly own shares of a luxury ski resort by buying security tokens. That token sale brought in $18 million. And y'all even understand what I just read, how they did that, what they made basically out of thin air. How hard is it for me to go make a um, security token on one of these blockchains? And just find an asset to back it with. I can make a million tokens, pop them off in the ICO, IPO, STO stage for a dollar. That's a million. These brothers checked 18 million. You know what I mean? Just, man, y'all got to start raising y'all vibration and y'all frequency of thinking when y'all think about cryptocurrency. Stop thinking I want to buy this and cash it out for Federal Reserve. Um, 
that's kind of backwards thinking if you ask me they're allowing you to transact they're allowing you to transfer yo hey this is another thing i'm gonna tell y'all please believe this it's not going to be that easy to leave the system in to leave that federal reserve system just to leave the cash system uh-uh they're going to make a dividing line if, I'm, I'm telling y'all now remember i said this in 2019 beginning june just excuse me january 8th 2019 remember i said it is not going to be that easy for you to leave the fiat cash system and head right over to this cryptocurrency space i'm telling y'all that now it's already getting ridiculous with brothers having to use ids at the atm machine i mean look at it like this you don't got to use an id to go use a regular atm machine huh y'all catching that you don't have to use an ID to use a regular ATM machine that you get Federal Reserve notes from. But in order for you to put Federal Reserve notes in, they want to know who the hell you are. And why? Because they're giving you the crypto. Man, hope y'all y'all catch it. Man, don't be looking for that 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 Lindsay you missing that low hand like my brother Sabir's face. Say. Um, anyways, it goes on to say security tokens and STOs have compared to stable coins, cryptocurrencies pegged one to one to government backed currencies to avoid the volatility typically seen in the cryptocurrency market. Stable coins is seen as another potential area for growth in the cryptocurrency industry. Goldman Sachs backed FinTech part of the launch a stable coin pegged to the US dollar last year. Goldman, you know, gold, like these family names. Anyways, the chief executive, Jeremy. Al Air has told CNBC he thinks all fiat currency will be crypto. Hmm. I don't even want to. I, mean, I don't think I got to go on with this story, man. They, they didn't drop enough school. No, I'm saying, is that, that's it? Okay. I guess I can finish that off. It's only a little bit left, but man, just what they didn't drop already. Like, all right, cryptocurrencies and SEOs will continue to evolve, and digital stocks are another step in that process. Um, advocates also say that security tokens can reduce the cost of listing a company on the stock market and make it easier to invest And though it may be early days, one expert thinks the trend of tokenization, tokenizing securities will become a major theme by mid-2019. And, and, and remember y'all hearing this right now, they're going to use this process to tokenize the jail system. Listen to what I'm telling you right now. The jail system not only will be ran by AI, it will also be ran on the blockchain. Whereas if you are given a certain amount of years and that's your sentencing, it's going to be executed through the use of a smart contract. Remember, I'm telling y'all this shit January 8th, 2019. Remember, I'm telling y'all this right now, how they're going to do this jail system. Now, if you know anything about how the jail system really works with the bonds and I'm going to leave all that alone, but just remember what I said. Given the long regulatory, uh, Regulatory approval process for those assets rather than non for IC, uh, than none for ICOs. Entrepreneurs have a slower path to market, but perhaps a more stable one. Even before, hold on, what, what perhaps even uh, some be, uh, some even believe that eventually everything from artwork to re, to real estate will be transformed into digital tokens. Over the next decade, we could very well see the tokenization of the entire financial market. Maddie Greenspan. Greenspan, senior market analyst at eToro said in a note last week, essentially anything that has value and can be traded can also be represented as a digital token. Property, that goes for favors, that goes for everything. I just don't even know. Let me show y'all what Illinois is getting ready to do with the clock. Find out what a birth certificate, no. Look up what a certificate is. That's what I want you to look up. Look up what a certificate is. Um, here we go. Look up what a certificate means. It, it is deemed ownership by one party of, man, look, that stamp right now, this is what I want y'all to comprehend. When they put this, God damn, what they be dropping some jewels. Look, this is what I want to drop to y'all right now. When y'all get this right here, this stamp right here, this is them signing a the contract, you, to the corporation, to the paper, to the contract before your foot ever steps foot on the land. This is them taking your estate from you, being able to control their estate. This contract right here, you see this, this footprint right here on the piece of paper? Parents, what you're doing when you sign it, when you get a birth certificate made? Damn, I'll, uh, I'll leave that alone. But anyways, 
Illinois launches blockchain pilot to digitize, digitize birth certificates. That's all. I'm going to leave it like that. If you know what a birth certificate truly really is, my son does. My son is 12 years old. And he understands that a birth certificate represents the equivalent of a warehouse receipt. At 12 years old, my son knows knows this. Not he thinks, not theory. He knows. Um, but anyways, and they're going to put this on the blockchain. So when we look at contracts, right, 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 right. All right. So it's been enough chatting about that, man. What we're gonna do right now is let head over to the uh, head over to the. Uh, to the, uh, and I'm tired, fam. I'm tired, so I'm running on fumes. I don't even know what some of these thoughts. When my mouth just gets to rambling, I'll be going 100 miles an hour. Like, if the downloads becoming quick, everything I just said about the prison system that really just came up out of my mouth just lickety split, like it downloaded from my from wherever to my mind out to the screens of y'all. That was a damn good spill. I've said a couple of things on here that I myself stepped outside of myself, seen myself, and heard myself saying that I'm gonna go back and listen to over again because I honestly. Amazed at other side of me, they were like, Man, what dude just said that real shit, though. This ain't even the two my own horn or nothing, but just the comprehension level be crazy, goddamn, when you get in that zone. That's how I was in the zone for a second. I've been getting in these zones sometimes. So anyone that's been listening to me, watching me for a while, y'all can tell when I get in them little zones when I just he's just going. I'll be sort of like going off topic, but on topic, but on to something, you know what I mean? Um. Got to put more bread in the blockchain tech, not just individual crypto. Fact, fact, fact. Yeah, they got my ass. Every dollar I put in the crypto is tracked. Yes, sir. Um. Anyways, family, what we're going to do right now is take a look at the top 20 coins in the crypto market per coin market. Cap. Let's see what we're looking at right now. We got 137.253. Let's refresh and see where we're at. 137.253. We go up or we go down. One. 37, 199, we went down. So we got 137 billion, million, market cap. And that does not represent all the cryptocurrency. We got a 24 hour volume of 16 billion, 414 million, 556,191 dollars. BTC dominance right now is at a 51.6%. Right now there's over 20,000, no, 2,091 different cryptocurrencies to be choose from, and over 15,000. 946 different cryptocurrencies to be shop on. I mean, different markets to be shop on. Coming in at number one, Big Bank Hank trading at $4,053. Um, I want to see Bitcoin first reach 4400 Let me see a pullback. Then I want to see Bitcoin break 44 and use it as support. So I want to see a hit on resistance and a hit on support off of 4400 Let's see if I can get it. It'd be real monumental if it was 4444 or 4488 or 4408, 80, one of them. That'd be crucial. Or 4404. Um, anyways, we're gonna look at the opening and the closing when we hit that mark. I'm not even gonna say if, I know we're hitting it. But um coming in number two, we got Ethereum. Ethereum right now at $153, up 2.1, uh 51%. Oh, Bitcoin at 1.26%. So if I ain't say it, 1.2, 2.5, uh XRP. Remember family. We have to remember the difference between BTC and USD. In fact, I'm going to show y'all a real good example right now. So check this out. Without me even, let me see. Uh, right now, Ripple, right? If we look at Ripple, Ripple is actually in the negative point. 33% in BTC if you're trading it versus Bitcoin. I may be off. I think it's 0.33. Ah, 0.32%. All right, so you got to pay attention to that. Because you were looking at Ripple like it was up one point. No, what was it? Up 94%. Really, you in the red. Unless you're trading against USD, USDT, USDC, USDTC, whatever. All the state, any stable coin. Unless you're trading against a stable coin that is pegged to a dollar, that is just a dollar, and you're not instantly cashing your money out to a Federal Reserve or to something that's stabilized, and you're leaving it in Bitcoin, you're actually buying in a loss. I'm not going to keep dropping. I've been dropping that for almost two years now. You're actually buying in a loss. Always remember that. I don't give two iotas what this right here really says, unless I'm trading in this, and I'm really hardly ever trading in this. I usually trade in Bitcoin. Uh, coming in, I hope y'all caught that. I hope y'all caught that. 
Um, let's see. Coming in at number three, we got uh, nah. Coming in at number four, we got Bitcoin Cash at one hundred and sixty-one dollars, up one point five percent. Coming in at number five, we got EOS trading at two dollars and eighty-two cents, up two point six percent. Coming in at number six, we got Litecoin trading at thirty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. One of my personal favorites, which I called at around $22, $23 the day before Christmas. But no, maybe two days before Christmas. I told people they should snatch up $20 worth. Wait. Yeah, Get your children would be damn near sitting on double the money right now. When have you ever, let me ask people this. When have we ever bought our children an investment that doubled within 30 days of the investment? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me, when have you ever bought your child an investment that doubled or nearly doubled within 30 days of the investment date? Now wait. Tether coming in at 12 cents, up 2.7% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number eight, we got Tether, which is supposed to be the cryptocurrency equivalent to the United States dollar, though there is a number of other um, cryptocurrency Back coins, stable coins right now. Coming in at number nine, we have Tron. Tron right now at two cents, up 10% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number 10, we got Bitcoin SV. Bitcoin SV right now at $87. Oh, Tron up 10% too, just so y'all know, in USD anyways. Tron up 10%. Uh, Bitcoin SV at way in the rear. Um, coming in at number 11, we got Cardano. Cardano right now trading at $11. I mean, no, nah, hold on. Well, Cardano trading at five cent, up seven per, uh, percent. I don't know. I was looking at number eleven. I'm getting sleepy. Um, coming in at number twelve. Like I'm telling you, I'm running on fumes. I'm running on straight fumes. I ain't been getting no sleep. Um, and I'm packing this stuff. I'm tired. I got sit in front of this. I ain't sat in front of a uh, computer screen in about almost a week now. So it's kind of uh, strenuous on the eyes. But I'm gonna get through this countdown at least. Uh, I think we had a pretty good show. For anyone that did like the show, come on, give me a, a love, a like, a thumbs up. Give me something, a share. Coming in at number 12, we got IOTA. IOTA right now at 36 cents, up 1.5%. Coming in at number 13, we got Vanel trading at $53.90. Up Coming in at number 14, let me ask you this. There was a number of people. I didn't really get no shout-outs. I didn't want to even answer. I sent an uh, inbox or a text out to a great number of people, and – I suggested they take a look at Tron when it was a certain price. That was around or below 600 sacks. Since then, Tron has shot up to what, 688? 10% gains plus? You do the math. Anyone that has a million dollars trading capital, and there's people that got a million dollars trading capital, I don't think that that's so far fetched. I'm going to tell you like this if one of them.